you have to have a look and see what your competition are already doing online okay because it's very important that you have a unique selling proposition you have to position yourself in a unique way okay so immediately whoever's reading about you or watching you on a video or whatever they perceive you as different to the others because the question is always well, why do i do business with you and not the guy next door okay so you have to position yourself in in a unique way now for example with real estate i I'm a, i would certainly do videos and YouTube videos use drones and stuff like that but I would also start blogging and, and and using LinkedIn in particular because there's a lot of property investors out there on LinkedIn okay so you've got to start writing about what you know about but but write in a unique way and write a lot of stuff I mean I I post probably three or four times a week now sometimes a bit less depends what's going on with the business and what's going on in the world I always try and make sure that I write something that's going to be interesting okay more stuff you write more chance you have of capturing the one because it's all about the one okay I don't need to Absolutely. sell a plane a day okay if I sell three or four aircraft a year I'm happy okay I don't need to sell because because it's very high-end I make a lot of money on each transaction so I'm not selling like a book or something like that which, which I maybe make $10 on. So I'm aiming very, very niche. The same with a luxury property guy. I mean, these luxury property guys maybe make three, four $400,000 per sale. So again, it's very, very high, but they have to be perceived as the experts. So they have to share information about what they know, go about it in a very unique way. I mean, when I, I always tell people, I don't just sell you the plane. I'm worried about you having a positive airplane experience. So, and, and I tell them all about the pilots and how important it is to choose the right pilot and, and it's not about having some hot shot from from the US Navy or whatever no it's, it's somebody that understands your personality it's very important with a private jet private jet is private so you need somebody that's gonna stay with you a long time not someone's gonna stay with you five minutes because pilots like to talk especially in the bar at night you don't want any of that going on you want it to stay private you want the guy to stay with you a long time so it's always best to choose the man the right man and then maybe train him on that particular aircraft so I talk a lot about the pilot as well as the plane and I package it together as one. A lot of my competitors are just worried about selling a plane. I mean, that guy that I spoke to the other day, if it had been somebody else, they would have sold him a plane for a million dollars, taking the money. When we had a lady call us up a couple of years ago from Nigeria, and she had these two planes for sale. She said, Fabrizio, can you help me sell my two planes? I said, okay, how much do you want? She's gone on and on. She wanted $3.2 million for one of these planes. So I did an analysis and I said, I said, Heather, this plane of yours is worth 2.6 million. Oh no, I don't know. Anyway, it turns out she'd overpaid for the airplane to the extent that the broker that sold her the plane had made $700,000 per plane, which is unheard of on a bigger plane, let alone this small, little, tiny plane. So I said, Heather, what made you buy this plane? Oh, it was pretty. Ah. So what happened? This guy that sold her the plane was not selling her what she needed. He was selling, he saw he could make a lot of money. And that was probably number one priority for him. Number two, she thought it was pretty. He could make $700,000. He made the money and ran. And now she finds herself not needing these. They were too small. They didn't do what she needed. She needed to sell them. Again, she wanted to recoup the money, which she wasn't going to recuperate. We, we managed to put together a lease for her, which she didn't go for, unfortunately. Um, and then we let her go. And then she rings me up a year later, expecting the same money for the airplane. I said, well, it's actually gone down in value. No, no, it hasn't flown, she says to me. It's still gone down in value. It's now worth 2.2. But, you know, we never did any business with this lady. But it told us how other people are doing this business. And so then it helped us to tweak the way we do it to make sure that when someone does come in, and we have a 25% closure rate, so that's very, very high. When people come to us and they sit down, we have a 25% chance of the deal going through. But that's because we've managed to filter out a lot of the time wasters, and we've also positioned ourselves in a certain way to attract the right people.